Now, Senator Maloney, please. Good morning, Alaska here. Look, Prime Minister, <clears throat> welcome to the House, and also congratulations on your elevation of the Cabinet. And I, I, I know even from your speech and the way you delivered it that you have uh, a lot of compassion and will deal with this with compassion. Colleagues, many of us here are privileged to be parents either by birth or adoption. Either way, I have no doubt that all of us showered our children with love, affection, with a good education, and indeed with the material things in life. But colleagues, imagine an Ireland without a television, without a mobile home, iPads, iPods, computers, and certainly without Google. An Ireland of naivety and ignorance of the ways of the world. An Ireland of social conservatism, and an Ireland with devout Catholic ideals, but sadly, an Ireland without compassion, and an Ireland lacking in Christian values. An Ireland where a young girl could be turned out of her home to face the unknown. Imagine the fear in that young woman, and most times we couldn't even call them women because they were girls, just young girls. Girls who in a lot of cases didn't even know what was happening to their bodies. Imagine the terror, the loneliness, the isolation that young girl went through, disowned by her family, shunned by the neighbours, and an outcast from the community for having brought shame on herself and on her family. Facing the ordeal of giving birth and not knowing what would happen to her or to her unborn child, penniless and alone and totally dependent on those in charge of those mother and baby homes. That is the horrific situation that these young girls found themselves in between the 1920s and the 1960s, in a country where these women felt, and as the Taoiseach said, ashamed, suppressed and dominated. What happened to these girls once they walked or were dragged through the doors of these homes? We all know of the dreadful and harrowing stories of the Magdalene Laundries women, the residents of Bethany Home and the industrial institutions. If those walls could talk, would they tell us what happened to the babies? Was their birth recorded? Were birth certs ever issued? Were they baptised? Are there records of baptismal certs? And was there death recorder? And are there death certs? Is there anything in this world to say these innocent babies ever existed? Is there only legacy, a pile of bones lying discarded in an unmarked grave, or as suggested in media reports, in a septic tank? What of the fathers of these babies? They weren't cast out from their homes. They weren't left to fend for themselves, or they weren't made to take responsibility for their actions. No, they could skulk away and pretend it had nothing to do with him. They were considered sowing their wild oats. They lived in a country where laws were made by men and ruled over by men, and at the time protected men. Thankfully, that has changed, and today's men are more responsible and are willing to lead the charge in obtaining the truth and justice. Shameful is the word I would use to describe us as a nation, as a society that allowed this to happen. When we hear of mass graves in other countries, we immediately react with horror. Well, here it is on our own doorstep. It is our duty, and we owe it to these women, women and to those innocent babies found in that mass grave, and possibly more around the country, to many babies who were the subject of forced adoptions and those who were illegally registered. We owe it to them to find out exactly what happened, what the women endured, not just in tune, but all over this country. Minister, I welcome the way you acted so swiftly, and I welcome the establishment of a commission of investigation with statutory powers. The investigation must expose the injustice, the abuse, and the appalling treatment of these women. Shame on us as a society, shame on all politicians who stood over this appalling treatment of women and children during those years, and shame on the organizations, both state and religious, into whose care these young women were placed and who left them down so badly and a huge shame on all the men who got these women pregnant and then abandoned them. I welcome the fact that all parties are willing to work together to see justice being first and foremost and not making a political football out of a very sensitive and emotive matter. Well,